we will, uh, after the 20 minutes, we'll then go ahead and do breakout rooms and people can go ahead and talk with each other about what they just heard and any other thing they'd like to share. So we're gonna go ahead and introduce our speakers now. Erica uh, is a wonderful principal in New York at Middle School 322 in Washington Heights. <clears throat> uh, she is also an NSIP board member and has done, uh, and we're really pleased to have her practitioner voice on the board at this time, so that's great to have. She's gonna be joined by her colleague, uh, <clears throat> Veronica Kiss. And so Erica, I'm gonna turn it over to you and tell you thank you so much for being our guest on today's Coffee Break. Thank you so much, Mark. So good morning, everybody. Ms. Ke Veronica Kiesch, uh, you'll notice Veronica has a beautiful accent. She is from Hungary and she's been with us for 13 years. Uh, uh, like, Ms. like Mark said, my name is Erica Ziegelman. This is my 40th year in education. Actually, I'm starting my 41st year in education. And uh, I don't know if I'm slowing down yet. I haven't. Mm -hmm. uh, I am the principal, the founding principal of Middle School 322, which a couple of years ago consolidated with the uh, IS 218. And I am their prevailing principal. Thank you, Mark, for the warm introduction. Hi, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. And thank you, Mark, for having us and giving us this opportunity to present on maintaining a positive school culture during these difficult times. My name is Veronica Kish. I am a teacher at Middle School 322 with Erica. And as she mentioned, I've been there for quite a while. I'm also the literacy coach and the ENL coordinator. So when we thought about this presentation, we thought about what motivated us. And if you were at the Marco Island conference, we all had the pleasure of hearing John Gordon speak and he gave us that wonderful book on leadership, which I basically devoured in a day. And there was a really important quote that came out of there. And it says, your most important job as a leader is to drive the culture, but not just any culture, culture, creating a positive culture that energizes and encourages people, which is really the epitome of what we have done during this remote learning time. The second quote is a quote that I first heard during one of my leadership classes. Uh, we had this great professor who had what he called his tattoos, these important sayings, important quotes that he would repeat week after week after week. And uh, this quote actually happens to be one of them. It goes, Culture Eats Strategy for Breakfast. It's by Peter Drucker. I'm sure many of you are familiar with either him, this quote, or the impact that culture can have on your school. So without having that positive school culture, without having those teachers who are willing to take on the risks and try the new strategies, any kind of new system or any kind of initiative that you're trying to implement is bound to fail, unfortunately, which is why it is so important that we tend to our school's culture. Okay, so this would not be any kind of Sam coffee break if it did not have a poll. So uh, for this one, you will need your browser and I'm also going to put this in the chat, which might be easier for you. So you can just click on it on the chat. Uh, I, I do wanna thank you Marshall because he is the one who introduced us to this website a couple of weeks ago during one of the slam uh, coffee breaks. And I actually ended up using his step-by-step -step directions, which were really good. But uh, if you do end up into, if you do run into trouble, we might have to reach out to him. So please go ahead, click on the link. And this is the question you're going to see. So in a few words, please describe what you did during remote learning to maintain your school's positive culture. And we are very curious to see what it is that you guys been doing and we're looking forward to learning some new strategies, some new systems that you put in place. It could be anything, it could be something that you already had, uh, something new perhaps. And let's see. Oh, I see. Some of you are writing in the chat. That's fine. Okay. So I'm seeing a lot of compliments, sharing what works. 
uh, weekly meetings, very good. Communication, absolutely, it's key. Oh, I thought that I did activate it actually. Yeah, it works, mm -hmm. but it's okay. Either way, chat or poll F, same thing. Social Zoom meetings, good, awesome. Positive messages. Birthday celebrations, that's great, I love that. Family nights, game nights with staff. Wow, DJ playing music, that's really awesome. I think we might sell some of these for yeah. <laughs> next year. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. And here we go. So as uh, Mark already mentioned, we are from New York City and um, this pandemic and the school shutdowns, they all impacted all of us all by the different times. So for us, the DOE, the New York City Department of Education, closed the schools on March 16th, which meant that we had about a week to prepare for what was to come. So administrators and teachers had about three, had three weeks to be physically in the building and prepare for remote learning. And on March 23rd, over 1 million students and 75,000 teachers began remote learning. <clears throat> so, so, as you can see from the illustration on the side, we have a beautiful state-of-the-art technology room uh, at our building, which did us absolutely no good during remote learning because we couldn't use it, we couldn't take it down, we couldn't give the kids the things. But what we did find out was that 78% of our students did not have access to laptops. A lot of the kids didn't have internet at, uh, connection at home. So we really had a lot to deal with. We did spend a couple of those days. We gave out every laptop and iPad possible to kids, but we still didn't have enough devices. The DOE in their infinite wisdom did come up with a system to get devices to kids, which took a long time. So some of our kids were dealing without a device and struggling just to do work and take pictures of their work uh, and send it in. Many of our staff members, who, even though they're very young, they still needed more uh, PD on what to do. They needed assistance on how to really take a deep dive into technology. We needed to do a lot of PDs about Zoom, Google Meets, our Jupyter Grades, which is our big platform for for our grading book and for where the kids found assignments. A lot of them had no idea how to post assignments there. They just used the grading book. And also we really relied heavily on our TC teachers, college readers and writers consultant for um, ongoing MPD on how to do successful literacy lessons, which then moved into a lot of other lessons and other contents online. We also did positive check-ins. So every week teachers knew when we were meeting and all we talked about were successes. We talked about what worked, what didn't work, how to fix it, how to share best practices. We have a large paraprofessional staff because we have so many children who have so many high needs. We also have a student outreach team, which I'll talk about a little later. But more importantly than that, we also had our mental health check-ins with teachers. And I scheduled those, but before I did that, as you can see from the little Sam calendar excerpt here, I always prepped for each meeting. So I did a deep dive into what they had posted for the kids online, the lessons that they had done with the kids, the work that went positively, and I gave them some next step feedback on how they can take it. But I always started the conversation with the teacher on how's it going at home? How's your family doing? How are you doing? What can I do to make it better for you? Then we also had a teacher. And like I said, a lot of people stepped up to take on leadership. So one morning I woke up and I checked my emails like I always did. And I saw a um, thing that said an email that said, good morning. I clicked on it and I was like, oh no, what is this going on? And to my surprise, I saw a YouTube link to a piece of music and it just made my morning. Everybody was looking forward to those little pieces of music. And not only that, but there was a variety of genres that were chosen. And here are some excerpts and some pieces that every day was seen by 
our staff and the comments back to this one teacher were like, thank you, thank you, you made my day. Oh my God, what a great piece of music to start my day with. Okay, next. Okay, so when I first learned about online teaching remote learning, as any good teacher would do, I started sitting down, I put together my group, so I would have about five, six kids in each group. I started inviting them to these online lessons on uh, Zoom and then later on using Google Meet. So after a while, I noticed that for some reason it was always the same kids showing up and I ended up with a few who, were never, who never showed up. So I called home, I called the parents, I talked to the students themselves, and after a while I began to notice a pattern in what they were saying. A lot of them said that they were having issues with the computers, some of them didn't have access to Wi-Fi, some of them were sharing the device with one of their siblings. So there were all sorts of things going on at home, which at the time I was not aware of. So um, I contacted my colleagues, the other teachers, and they also said that they also were having the same difficulties. So we decided to record our lessons. So this way, every child would have access to our teaching. Uh, we use two programs. The first one that you actually see an example of here is called Loom, which allows you to record yourself and also uh, your screen. As you can see, the students can, when they watch the video, they can actually kind of like on Facebook and social media, they can like different parts of the video. Uh, they can give it a thumb up or a little heart emoji. So it's a really great way to engage students. Uh, another way of recording our lessons was using QuickTime Player, which is available for the Mac. Uh, I personally use that one quite a lot because it allows you to edit. So if you're a little bit more technologically savvy, then that might be another option for you. Uh, so these links, these videos were also shared with our students via our online grading system, Jupyter Grades. And just like Erica mentioned at the beginning, not all of our, not all of our teachers were tech savvy and this was all new to everybody. So we all had to learn. And we actually had two wonderful teachers who were willing to share what they knew about Loom. So they made this, they created this PD and invited teachers to join. And we actually had a very good turnout. Most of our teachers were, were present at this voluntary PD and a lot of them ended up using Loom afterwards. Um, and other Thing that we also did to help our students was to record tutorials both in English and in Spanish because again a lot of them needed that extra support. Okay so we did some online teaching, we did recorded lessons and after a while we felt it was time to kind of spice things up a little bit and create something that's a little bit different. So that's when we thought of theme week. This was something that was absolutely 100% teacher-led we had our sixth, seven, and eighth grade teams meet. I think it took us about two weeks to create these assignments. Our sixth graders decided to go with a time capsule assignment. Our seventh graders did a looking forward reflection piece. Eighth grade decided to go with high school. So the way it worked is that our students would log into Jupyter Grades and every single day they would have one assignment. Let's say Monday would be ELA, Tuesday would be math and so on and so, and so forth. So that actually allowed our students to take some time and really uh, dive into that one content without feeling the pressure. And at the end, we had some really great projects which you wanted to showcase. And of course, when you're in the building, you can have a bulletin boards, you can have these wonderful publishing parties where you have pizza and you invite other teachers, you invite the families. But when you are online, you can't do that. So we really had to get creative, which is when we learned about um, this website called Padlet. So Padlet is really great. It actually allows you to create a virtual bulletin board. You can see examples of those bulletin boards here. Um, the one on the top called Virtual Baking is one that one of our teachers did with her students. And it was a really great activity. They were all online on Zoom, uh, baking these little, cakes, I guess. And um, it was a really great way for the students to connect with each other and with their teacher. The second example that you see below is called the big arts table. And that's from one of our, uh, it's from our art teacher who really went above and beyond to make sure that our kids had another outlet to uh, 
kind of show their feelings and express themselves and how they felt about what was going on uh, at the time. And I want to just add on to that piece that my AP, who's not with me, with not with us here at this meeting, but he was like, he, when we, uh, we always attended the grade meetings where they were planning these theme weeks and he would text me and he'd go, Ziegelman, don't say anything. Let the teachers take the lead. Let the teachers take the lead. And I was like, you're absolutely right. The teachers really took the lead on these themes. And that's what made it so positive that they really stepped up and took it on, that it just was a new way of learning for our kids that engaged them. So I mentioned before that we had this uh, positive student outreach team. Our teachers were so overwhelmed by planning lessons that they just couldn't handle reaching out to kids. So we had a meeting with all of the people who became our outreach team, deans, guidance counselors, secretaries, parent coordinator, our success mentor from our CBO, uh, even our school aides who are missing from the list. Everybody got in and we all had these weekly meetings. And what we did was we divided the classes up amongst these people and they were the ones reaching out to the children on behalf of the teachers. Hey, did you get your work done? Hey, what's going on? Hey, how do we help you out with this? What do you need help with? And they, they would report back to the teachers. The teachers would then send, thank you so much for helping me out. Thank you so much. This was a really positive piece for us that we needed these people. Uh, to, to really make these phone calls. One message that came to me from a student about a teacher came at 7 p.m. at night and I was like, 7 p.m. at night? What am I doing at 7 p.m. at night? I texted a couple of the people on the team where I knew this kid came from. Well, that night till about 10 o'clock, we were finding out if we can get in touch with this kid. It, everybody was involved with this. Well, we didn't get to the kid until the next day and it was like, well, the teacher didn't grade my assignment right. <laughs> Like, but the fact of the matter is, is that this team reached out to find this child beyond recognition. Uh, a very big piece of our school was, this was again, teachers stepping up and said, hey Ziegelman, what do you think about if we send the kids postcards? We know how much they miss the school. We know how much they miss us. And we really wanna let them know that we're thinking about them. So two teachers got together, they designed this postcard. This is the English version. We also had a version in Spanish went home with, which went home to the native language families. Every child received a postcard in the mail in one of two languages. This just sent positive messages and positive vibes to everyone throughout the school, parents, teachers, students alike. And on the left, you can see thank you notes from some of our coaches, Ms. Keish in particular here, to teachers thanking them for all the hard work that they have done. Okay, so in order to bring the community together and uh, really pay attention to the social emotional well-being of all of us, uh, we decided to do a speed, weekly speed day videos. This was something that uh, our guidance counselor put together. She's really great with making videos and um, she actually invited staff members and students to send pictures to her and then she would create these beautiful videos featuring uh, the pictures. So on the left, uh, you actually can see a wonderful example, of one of our crazy hair day pictures. Uh, this teacher in particular really took it all the way. Uh, she really had fun with it. We also had the pajama day and a heroes, heroes day where we thanked all the essential workers for all their hard work. And you can see examples of those uh, with the kids over here. Uh, some of our other uh, speed day videos were the quarantine look. An example of that is right there on the left. So this is a seventh grade student. She also shared uh, her quarantine routine with us. And we were very happy to see that online classes are the second spot. I mean, I kind of wish it was the first one, you know, you got to sleep, especially when you're a teenager. And we also had Wacky Tacky Day and School Spirit Day. You can see an example of that here with uh, Erica and Freddie, our assistant principal, showing off their school pride. And I'm going to speed it up a little bit because we really want you to see an example of a video and we want to honor the time limit here. But when Black Lives Matter and George Floyd died, 
our school came together to really support the Black Lives Matter movement. Every teacher, every kid got involved. And what came out of it was like a four or five minute video, which is not the one we're showing. Uh, and it really said, we have to do something. And it was a major piece of our school. Okay, next. Yeah, hold on. Uh, yes. And finally, when it came time to our graduation, people really came together to celebrate the students. We didn't hire a, a vendor to put together a video for us. We did it together. And as you can see, the teacher over here on the left, wearing a suit and tie, making a little graduation speech for our big video, because dressing up and feeling good really meant something. The other teacher who was our basketball coach was wearing the school uniform, standing behind a basketball thing. Every picture of our graduates was in the yearbook and virtual certificates were included in there, which kids could download later, which were designed by Ms. Keish. So I really have to say thank you to that one. Uh, of course, okay. Uh, before we show the video, just real quick. So when we created this presentation, we reached out to our uh, staff members and asked them to send us some positive messages that the kids sent to them. Uh, and these messages really kind of gave us hope and showed that our kids were really getting uh, what they needed, even though we had to do it remotely. So here's a quick video, uh, which was created by a guidance counselor. And here we go. I don't see it. Sorry. Oops. Uh. <clears throat> Veronica, how about if we um, save yeah. the video? That's and fine. And we'll give, no, actually, I'd like people to get to see it. And so what we'll do is we'll include it with as a link to Perfect. the email that we send out to everyone. Uh, Veronica, anything else you'd like to say to finish up? And Erica, anything else you'd like to say to finish up? You've done a wonderful job, and I've really appreciated this. And you've given me a uh, renewed enthusiasm for all the things you can do when it's remote that really get people enthused about their work. Uh, Erica, Veronica, oh, anything else to finish up? I just think that, we, you know, uh, you have to find ways to engage people. Culture is contagious. Uh, in terms of the video, I used to send them to my school support person, Sandy Mayall. And at the end of the school year, he said to all the principals he supported, hey, I want to share this video I made. It's a first attempt. I never did it. So hopefully you're going to like it. Culture is contagious. It's a good contagious. And people will catch the culture bug if you really put yourself out there. So thank you all for being part of this. And we hope we shared some really good things with you. Yeah, I also would like to thank you. And I'm really looking forward to hearing what you guys did at your schools. Because uh, just looking at the chat and looking at some of the examples, it seems like that there's definitely things that we can learn from each other. And I think the Sam Coffee Break is a really a great opportunity for us to come together and really learn from each other. So I'm looking forward to talking to you in the breakout rooms. Thank you so much. Well, you've really given us a lot to think about. And the examples you gave were terrific. I particularly, well, there were so many that I enjoyed. But I have to tell you that the use of the music every morning where you, a teacher was sending out a link saying, hey, good morning. How brilliant was that? But how smart it was that the two of you as administrators said, let's use this so we can build on the good feeling that people are trying to create in this situation. I wanna thank everyone for participating today. And I particularly wanna thank Erica and Veronica for a really nice presentation. This was really well done and we appreciate it. I know many of you have put your comments in the uh, chat box and I'll copy that so I can send it to Veronica and Erica in a few minutes. As you know, we're now going to go to the breakout rooms. Those of you who would like to stay with us, stay on, and we'll put you in breakout rooms in just a moment. Breakout rooms will last for about 20 minutes. At the end of 20 minutes, I'll give you a warning that we're going to close the breakout rooms and then we'll close. So breakout rooms now are just getting ready to start, and here they go. And thanks again, everyone.